fracture of the neck of the fibula. What is it? Why is it important? And what are the complications? Welcome to our new video in what if this bone fractured? In this series, we highlight a specific fracture in the human skeleton, such as fibular neck fracture. To help you raise your knowledge, you can find the other kind of fractures in our what if this bone fractures playlist. Hi, this is Adil Hajjai from The Anatomist. On this channel, we are helping medical students to understand and enjoy human anatomy. If you are new here, consider subscribing. The fibula is a cylinder lateral bone of the leg. It takes no part in the articulation at the knee joint, and it also takes no part in the transmission of body weight, but it provides muscles attachments. The head of the fibula can be palpated easily at the level of the superior part of the tibial tuberosity, because its knob-like head is subcutaneous at the posterior lateral aspects of the knee. The neck of the fibula can be palpated just distal to the fibular head. Isolated fibula fractures are quite rare, much less common than fibula fractures with associated ligamentous involvement and or tibia fractures. Although a forceful impact such as landing after a high jump or any impact to the outer aspects of the leg can cause a fracture. Even rolling or spraining an ankle puts a stress on the fibula which can lead to a fracture. Fibular fractures are common in sports, especially those that involve involve running, jumping, or quick changes of direction such as football, basketball, or soccer. Fractures of the proximal fibula are significantly associated with injury to the ligamentous and neurovascular structures, and the most vulnerable structure is the common fibular nerve, which is also known as common perineal nerve. It crosses posterior lateral to the neck of the fibula and can be rolled against the underlying bone at this location. The common fibular nerve is one of the terminal branches of the sciatic nerve, which is bifurcate at the apex of the popliteal fossa. Its root value from L45 and S1, and it follows the medial border of the biceps femoris and its tendon, passes over posterior aspects of the head of the fibula, then winds around the neck of fibula deep to the fibularis longus muscle where it divides into deep and superficial fibular nerves. The superficial fibular nerve supplies the lateral muscles of the leg, which are fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. Both muscles avert the foot and turn the sole outward and supplies most of the skin on the dorsal aspects of the foot and toes, except for skin on adjacent sides of the first and second toes, which is innervated by the deep fibular nerve, and skin on the latter side of the foot and little toe, which is innervated by the sural nerve. The defibular nerve supplies the anterior muscles of the leg, which are tibialis anterior, extensor halicis longus, extensor digitorum longus, and fibularis tertius. In addition to that, it supplies the extensor digitorum brevis and the first two dorsal interosei muscle in the foot. Collectively, these muscles dorsiflex the foot at the ankle joint, extend the toes, and invert the foot. The defibular nerve supplies general sensory branches to the skin on the adjacent dorsal sides of the first and second toes and to the web space between them. The common fibular nerve is exposed to direct trauma and it is involved in fractures of the upper part of the fibula. Its injury causes dysfunction and symptoms may include decreased sensation, numbness or tingling in the top of the foot or the outer part of the leg. The foot drops and the patient will be unable to hold the foot up because of the losing the motor function of the anterior and lateral muscles of the leg. Slapping gait, this describes the patient's walking pattern in which each step makes a slapping noise. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the like button, share the video with your colleagues, and subscribe to this channel. This really will support us. See you in the coming video.